G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here, back for, again for the fifth match of this pauper leg. We lost the die roll here, gonna be on the draw, and straight off the bat, opponent keeping seven cards and we're mulling pretty hard. So ditch this, um, I think we actually ditch land here. Utopia Sprawl is quite useful in a lot of matchups. Um, and we want to have like good aura quality, right? Forest from the opponent into Arbor Elf. All right, we're fucked. <laughs> uh, keeping a one land hand into Ponza is a lot of trouble. Scout and pass. All right, well, opponent goes Forest into Utopia Sprawl. Utopia Sprawl on red. They could still have Thermo Task destroying our land. Acid Moss. Sure. This would potentially be a different get game if we won the die roll. It would also be a different game if we didn't have to mull so hard. <laughs> so scout to the bottom. Scout is not mana. Um, Crystal Grotto is not great mana, but at least it's scribed one. Opponent plays Avenging Hunt. Initiate. Underworld City. Yeah, cool. This is going to be easy to deal with. Down on resources. Utopia Sprawl active. Another two mana. And not... Oh, foretelling a card with the two mana. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and concede. We're far enough behind. Um, maybe we can get there, but like, yeah, there you go. Waste of time. Reminder, guys, if you do find this video entertaining or informative, please consider subscribing. Um... So this is generally a pretty tough matchup for us. Um, our main weakness in Pauper is our land base. The fact that we don't have good access to green and white mana at the same time um, while being aggressive. So we have to spend time, spend tempo developing our white mana, putting these enchantments on our lands, and anything that destroys these enchantments that go on our land, big, big, trouble for us so obviously acid moss thermocast stone rain numbers of these may vary a little bit but usually thermocast is played more more copies of that than sto stone rain um they have big cascade creatures which they go towards and then just some card draw creatures with avenger and uh, pack mate uh, post board, I mean, they don't really have much. They can sweep the board, which is pretty bad for us. They have D-Glamour, actually. D-Glamour is a big uh, backbreaker for us. Um, there's potential for fog effects as well, but I don't think that's as likely. So we are going to want to bring in our Crimson Acolytes here. They are important. Um, it's going to efficiency swap for us on a ledge walker. If our opponent is looking to sweep the board, or even just as a chump blocker for their big red cascade boarding party card. Um... Other than that, we probably want to be low to the ground as possible. So I'm going to look at minusing out our Ancestral Mask. It gets nerfed as well when um, our enchantments on our lands inevitably go to the graveyard, right? Uh, if we had Gutshot, I think I'd bring it in, deal with the Arbor Elf, get some tempo. Ram through is really not good for that, though. Uh, so we'll... I guess we'll leave Ledge Walker in. And just be heavy on creatures. I might minus one ledge walker for one ancestral mask. Let's get into it. Come on, good seven deck. We really need it. Fuck you. All right, this is keepable. Um, fairly decent. If we get to the stage of resolving armadillo cloak, we're probably at a good place where we're close to winning. Um, I think we have to bottom the armadillo cloak though. Except that our opponent's probably going to be blowing up our lands and accept the tempo swing with, that comes with that. So we'll keep this, get into it. Hopefully we draw a different um, Armadillo Cloak, honestly. <clears throat> Topia Sprawl, sure. So we can Rankle here. We can Cartouche here. We can get at least a creature which is able to attack with First Strike and Trample. Hopefully our opponent goes after our white mana because we actually have good green mana here. See what they do. Wild Growth over there. Another Acid Moss. Yeah, they go after Plains, so that actually could have been worse. Rancor. Sure. <laughs> 
We'll just ignore ever having mana from this point because we got the early turns to establish a threat. Opponent can interact with D Glamour, but we'll force them to have it. If they're spending uh, money, time doing that, they're not spending time interacting with our um, land base. Jeweled Thief, sure. Bogle. All right, so we'll go ahead and attack for six. Do you block opponent? No blocks, they're on three. We still have a six power first strike trampling creature. It's possible we take this. All right, Arbor Elf, one card left in hand. So, I mean, off the back of two acid mosses, they didn't have much afterwards. Untap. Forest isn't too bad. We'll attack first. I think I'm happy trading off the warrior token as well. <clears throat> If I trade the warrior token with an Arbor Elf, I'm fine with that. We drew Burgle. Wow, opponent's going to go like this. Well, even if they do have D-Glamour... Wait, wait, wait. We put them to one? We keep our cartouche? What is this? This is wild. I think we're in a good spot. Do we just go wide with our scout now? Yeah, I think we go wide with our scout. Uh, with our Burgle, pardon me. All right, so opponent concedes. Lovely. On to sideboarding. Anything we want to change here. Well, if anything, our expensive stuff becomes even harder to cast, so we'll take out Silhana Ledgewalker. Um, maybe there's an argument to take out Cartouche of Knowledge because it's difficult to cast with our mana base. Um, bringing in Ancestral Mask instead. I think we're just a bit... All right, so this is one of the few matchups where seeing a land levy heavy hand like this is actually keapable. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just snap keep this. Hopefully our creature doesn't get pyroclasmed. And then we can build up with commune and the rest. Upper elf, sure. Find a second scout. Well, if they sweep the board, we're fine. <laughs> All right, opponent, tap land, Utopia Sprawl onto the forest, the potential to untap the forest, potential for de-glamour as well. Because um, we just start with commune. Hey, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Actually, it's a little hard to get to, but uh, see what happens. I'm going to just attack my opponent here and see what they do. If they trade off Arbor Elf, that's pretty cool by my book. <laughs> All right, no trading off Arbor Elf. Uh, I guess we throw out Abundant Growth. They could look to de-glamour one of our enchantments here. They do not. So likely they have a bigger turn this turn, blow up our land. Maybe it's a Cascade creature into blowing up our land. We, for a change, had a land heavy hand in this 17 card deck though, so it's not backbreaking. Uh, I think we Grotto, we Scry to land, so Scry land top. Can now cartouche. And attack. And any blocks from our opponent? No blocks. Looks like no de-glamour either. So if they uh, play de-glamour, it would have to have been drawn like this turn, right? Thermocask, sure. Hey, more mana. <laughs> Scry, what do we see? No, we don't want hexproof creatures. Go away. All right, so attack. An opponent's got one card in hand. The fact that we had a land heavy hand, they didn't hit their cascade cards. They are running out of gas real, sm real quick here. Uh, I think we're fine adding another creature to the board. I guess it's Ledge Walker. Um, it's possible for. A sweeper effect, it can happen. But then they'd need sweeper effect plus D glamour. All right, so this seems kind of decent. Mana. I think I'm just going to go in on the ledge walker. Attack with everything. And we should 
have navigated ourselves to a winning position from here most games. They could still hit Cascade Creature and we could break on Auras from this point, but... Alright, Dig Glamour um, had to have been drawn for turn with how they sequence everything else, but that's okay. But it's turn 6, and nothing. Passing back to us. Hey, look. An <laughs> enchantment. Don't mind if I do. Let's attack. <laughs> Attacking for four again. Opponent blocking here. I'd be surprised if there was another D-Glamour. Ah, uh, sure. Zero cards in hand. Loses as Arbor Elf. Currently has access to seven mana. Guess I don't feel so bad about uh, throwing down some of this stuff now, right? Alright, so we got our... Wait, I just put that on the wrong guy. Whoops. That was meant to go on Ledge Walker. Um, this leg's been a mess. Apologies, guys. Acid Moss. Sure. That's fine. Still have three mana. Still can cast any aura in our deck. Gaining some life. Uh, I guess we throw this down. Pass turn. Finally, opponent hits something. Jeweled Thief. And I guess that's going to trade with the Warrior token. We're going to put our opponent to two. This game's lasting an extra turn because we did put our aura on the wrong creature. And that is my mistake. I do apologize. Continue to develop mana. And... So Hana Ledgewalker wins in two turns, Scout wins in one, and one, assuming there's no blocker. Venger takes the initiative, opponent concedes. Well, there you go. <laughs> we recovered that league. Wow. Um, after punting in the first, first two games, second and third game, how did that play out? So... Sorry, so we punted in the second and third game. First against fairies, getting blown out by mutagenic growth. Second against um, against burn, getting blown out by main deck mutagenic growth into sideboard flaring plane after blocking with a 1-1 crimson acolyte. Um, but we came home strong after that, taking out Tron Ephemerate, taking out... Uh, Taking out Ponza, which is a rare day. Definitely happy to take that one out. Um, so how did I feel about the deck list and how it operated? Um, I think mostly it felt pretty good. I think Cartouche maybe felt a little bit questionable to me. Um, I think being in a spot where we want to... Where we're playing Crystal Grotto, we want to filter mana for... Cartouche and filter mana for white auras with just like two basic planes in the deck. I think it's running into a few inconsistencies. I think I want to just remove this for Satessan training. Um, I didn't really run into that problem previously, but previously I was also uh, I was also playing around main deck Carclan Shaman being a large part of the meta in the Grixis Finity list, and that was probably like 10% of the meta, and I was running into it all the time. So I'm just going to bring back in Satessan Training. Hopefully the Trim on Rancor hurts us a little bit less now. Uh, there's potential to Trim on Rancor a little bit further, maybe down to two copies, and to increase the Kajushu Solidarity up to four copies. Um... So the adjusted deck list for what I'm probably going to look to take into the next league looks a little bit like this, and um, hopefully I misplay a little bit less in those matchups and punt a few less games. I think we um, we high rolled after punting some of the other games. We high rolled some variants from our opponent and managed to win two tough matchups in the final two matches. So thank you all for very much for watching. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, um, if you want to see more action like this, please consider, uh, consider subscribing. And until next time, have a great day. I'll see you then.